Uh, good morning. I'm Bob Schulein. My company is RBS Consultants. And uh, this is a Totoro T7. And uh, just make sure you're sitting somewhere where you find some uh, earphones with a uh, body pack receiver. The title of the presentation is Binaural Audio Technology History, Current Practice, and Emerging Trends. So here's an outline of what I hope to talk about today. Um, we're going to spend a little time at the beginning to talk about the demo setup because if everybody doesn't really have it working well, it'll kind of spoil it for you. So we'll spend a little time getting that all sorted out uh, early. And then you'll probably be able to sort of control your own destiny here because every system has an earphone and uh, depending upon what Marcus feeds the transmitter, uh, you'll be able to hear me in various demos. So their mannequin came about from uh, the uh, tailor industry for, uh, and uh, they found this fellow that was a wax mannequin that they bought. They called him Oscar and they uh, basically cut holes in the side of his face and mounted microphones. So, as we kind of move ahead in time, what are some of the things that have changed since 1932 when this work was being done? Well, we've learned a lot more about the hearing process. Uh, certain tools allowed us to make measurements, studies were done and so forth. Um, and our understanding and refinement of the electronic and electroacoustical devices and their measurements has improved. And miniaturization of electroacoustic transducers has certainly been a factor. I like to kind of look at hearing in a three-part way in terms of, so I should say, sound or sound reproduction. We have the dynamic range, the tonal tonality, and localization. And uh, we're going to be talking more about localization. So these are all things we're familiar with. And uh, the uh, duplex theory of localization uh, came out of the work of Rayleigh around 1900 where he talked about what role might level differences between the ears mean and arrival time differences. So the level differences are... So the, the uh, evolution away from the traditional floor monitors to in-ear monitors uh, came about because of the fact you could give each person their own personal monitor. And these speakers are generating some ambience. There's always ambience going on around a performer. It's other musicians, it's uh, the house, uh, the sense of audience, and so forth. And when you block the ears, you lose that. So if, if you add a binaural listening system to the inner monitor, like we've been talking about, you can dial in the ambience you might want. Now, imagine we had something like this. Let's say we were going to capture uh, sound in this room and we had a mannequin that had a bunch of pairs of microphones uh, that were all re being recorded simultaneously and therefore we would have captured this direction, this direction, this direction, this direction all simultaneously. Now we put a head tracking device on the listener Thank you for listening to a small sample of this AES tutorial. To watch the full-length version, you can visit our AES tutorials page at www.aes.org slash publications slash tutorials.